Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division with various wins. Before we have a closer look at all the content, make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button. Also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. For those of you that do want to take the next step in your game and improve it even more, scan the QR code that is here on the screen or use the link patreon.com slash gold clash tommy you can find in the description down below that will take you to our platform where you can find all our premium guide checkpoint challenge tour play and tournament play but last but not least the info box on the right hand side gives you the club distance adjustment elevation adjustment also a ball and club type i suggest you to play with have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to but there is always a plan behind it so let's go to hole number one On hole number one, playing over the right side is most definitely going to be the best thing to do. And the reason I think that is because it will leave you a short iron instead of a long iron towards the pin. Obviously, if you do not want to take any risk with all the bunkers and stuff like that, you can play over the left, which will give you an easier drive, but the second shot will be tougher. So that is something you're going to have to decide for yourself. One right spin and a little bit of top spin to make sure that we are bouncing over the sand and not getting stuck into the sand. Because getting stuck into the sand, that's going to be a problem because then we're going to have a much, much harder time to lock in even the birdie, which obviously is not something we can miss on already at the first hole. Maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment. I'm using a little bit of curl to the right. You can see that the ball comes down very nicely and are now on the fairway more to the left uh, when it comes to looking at the center. Second shot, we are playing with a short iron towards the pin. Here, if you do have a good ball guideline with your thorn, such as a thorn level 8 or better, you can use a max backspin shot and go past the pin and let the ball roll back. But as I do not really have a good ball guideline, I'm not going to guess with that. I'm going to guess by going directly at the pin. Using one right spin, trying to avoid the mound that is there on the right hand side. And we are going to go directly at the pin, at least what it looks like. The hard part is with lower level clubs, as I always say, and I think this is definitely something that is tough in rookie division when you play with these type of levels of clubs, is that you have to really make a proper guess or like a good guess if you're going to have a chance of getting this ball in the hole. Bounces on the fairway up towards the pin, but we are aiming short, which is hard to know, but we know that for the next time. And sure, it's a tapping birdie, but we do want to start off with an eagle on hole one. Hole number two is a tough par five, and here I would recommend to play with the quarterback. And I'm play playing this one from NMT. And then moving one ring to the right. I'm using three top spin and two left spin to have the ball guideline to point straight down the fairway into that little gap, not gap, but into the more narrow part of the fairway at the top. Maximum distance with a 20% over adjustment, then try to hit perfect. I'm using a Titan ball here to ensure that if I would be rolling short, I will still have enough uh, power on the second shot to be able to attack the pin. I would strongly advise you to not try to blast this ball over the water because that will most likely not work and even if you would manage to do that you will still have the same type of distance towards the pin as you would have otherwise and that's i mean then it just becomes a stupid decision second shot either play with a sniper level eight or better and i don't have sniper level eight or better here or you do play with the horizon to give yourself the power but still having a decent ball guideline Using one and a half bar top spin, you can see that I'm playing, um, sorry, 1.8 top spin, and you can see that I'm playing a very aggressive line here, meaning that I'm looking to have the second bounce into the rough to roll up towards the pin. And frankly, this is the only way to drop this shot from distance here. So if you are not interested in attacking for the albatross, use the more wider fairway on the right, use backspin and curl it onto the green to give yourself a safe eagle. But here in this playthrough, I wanted to have every hole to give uh, at least a look at the albatross, even though it might not be dropping in this specific video. They were bouncing to rough, the ball rolls out, we're coming with a very good speed, just being a little bit uh, too much to the right there, which is obviously very unfortunate, 
here in hole number two. A tough one to get an albatross on, but with the shot already displayed, it is makeable. For hole number three, we're going to go for a rough bump. We're going to go very aggressive here because I do believe that this is going to be our best chance for an hole in one. Obviously, if you are not interested in taking any risk, even though the reward is big, then you can bounce on the fairway on the left and do just a normal tour play way of going towards the green you're bouncing on the far away up towards the pin but now we're using two left spin and a little bit of top spin to get the ball guideline to be just short of pin one thing to have in mind though is when you do play with lower level clubs is that you have to leave it short otherwise you will roll too hot and you won't be dropping that shot because you do not have a fully developed ball guideline medium distance with a 20 percent over adjustment here for this shot it bounces into the rough, rolls out onto the green, a little bit under adjusted, but with a decent speed. So a little bit more in adjustment, we would be having a good shot getting that one to drop on hole number three. For hole number four, you will see two options here. One where we do lay up as we do have a headwind, which we're gonna do in headwind and crosswind. If we do have a tailwind, we can actually go for the uh, be around the green area, which also will be displayed here in this playthrough. Maximum distance plus 10 is the adjustment of T. I'm using four and a half bar top spin and two left spin. The goal is to either clip the rough on the other side of the bunker or to not clip the rough at all and bounce over uh, every, all the parts of it. But when having four and a half bar top spin, it's going to be difficult to always avoid the rough, especially when we do play in headwind. Second shot, we're playing with a long iron. Here I would say it's either to play with a less powered ball from the beginning, such as a power one or even a power zero ball, if you do want to play with a sniper. But as we do have a rough bump, which will allow us, even with lower level long irons, to have a decent ball guideline, then I would still push it for a long iron instead, because it's going to be easier to play with a long iron than what it will be to play with a sniper. 5% elevation, true club distance. Now we are very close to max, so I will be using maximum distance numbers. And you can see there are rolling to the green. We unfortunately do not have speed enough to get the ball to roll towards the hole. But no matter what though, if we lay up, we will have a good chance for a drop if we do play the rough bump. But we all want to get closer to green, obviously. So if we do have the win for it, then I will show you next in the video what we're gonna do. So after searching for a tailwind for a long time in practice, I got to stay with a headwind. And it's interesting to see that even with a headwind here, we can actually reach over to the green area uh, with a power five ball. It is, however, though, an absolute must to have a power five ball, I would say, in all winds besides tailwind. If you do have a tailwind, a power three ball could be okay. You will still have to play with some overpower. But I think the brilliant part with a power five ball here is that you can actually then, then stretch out and make a better judgment call on how much overpower you will have to use in the specific type of wind directions, as you will then be able to see the first bounce into the rough and count how many rings you're into overpower and stuff like that. Maximum distance plus 10 is the adjustment and be prepared to always use overpower. But think about this. In the worst case scenario, if you're avoiding the water, which you need to make sure that you use enough overpower to do, then you are going to be in the rough or in the sand as a worst case, which still will be very close to green, which will still be giving you a good chance for a drop, but you will have a birdie at a minimum on your scorecard so if the wind allows and you have the ball you have the club i would definitely recommend to go for it instead of having to lay up but obviously you are the one that makes the decision for and uh, for what is best for you take your game to the next level with our ultimate tournament text guide for expert and or master division uh, the ultimate tournament text guides and all our premium guides can be accessed via our, via our platform on patreon via the link patreon.com slash called clash tommy in the description down below or you scan the qr code here on the screen pa president's cup is coming up we have a full line of the maple bay to play we will dig in doing free to play ball options and pay ball options for expert and master for you to be able to 
follow. For us, it is important that you as a user with us, with the free guides or the paid guides, doesn't really matter, but it is important for us that you feel that you are improving your game. That's our goal with everything we are doing. In the end, it doesn't matter what we ourselves are shooting in tournaments, how much win percentage we have in tour play, that really doesn't matter in the end. What matters is, can we improve your game? And we have shown that for years now, I'm going into almost my sixth year, or it has been six years in December of improving and helping thousands and thousands of players. So if you do want to join the largest guide uh, community for premium guides, which also objectively is seen easily by far the best guides on the market and the best guide service on the market, then you sign up and try it for yourself. You can try 30 days and see for yourself. You don't have to continue if you don't want to, but scan the QR code or use the link in the description down below. For hole number five, here I would say that it's going to be crucial to push this drive hard if we do have a headwind. Meaning with that is that I do would like to go with max overpower here to land on the fairway island on the left. Because if you are laying up on the right hand side, you have no chance whatsoever to reach for the green in two. And then that's just going to be a waste of ball and waste of your time. So max overpower with half a ball of left curl getting it over to the pad. We do want to reach to be as close to the rough line possible because the closer we are the better it's going to be on the second shot those that do have the possibility to play with a berserker ball please do that because then you will have power five and then you will have a much easier second shot now as we do have headwind and i'm playing with sniper even though sniper is in an okay level uh, as level seven for being a rookie level account you can still see that i couldn't really reach towards the green anyway or not even doing a rough bump so what i would recommend is to play with a wood club if uh, with a wood club that do have more power such as the big dog or even the cataclysm if uh, that is a club that you do possess because now with the sniper i'm playing myself uh, myself safely up and the goal was to use the hill to fall back towards the pin for a simple pot but even if i am there on the fringe it's still going to be a simple way of getting the eagle what to have in mind here is that this is a display of headwind if we do have a tailwind or a crosswind obviously the second shot will be much easier and it will give you a look for the albatross unfortunately i do not have a video for that but it's something to be worth having in mind so this is only going to be an eagle and only if you do not have the possibility to play with a power fireball nor that you do have the clubs to reach on the second shot for hole and number six we're gonna play with our sniper and a navigator ball and we're gonna go a rough bump and here i want to say that uh, playing a rough bump here is going to be such a massive advantage compared to playing any other type of play here because this green is very weird so if you do get too high up the green even if you fall down in the direction of the pin you will come in too hot and you will bounce out so you're going to either have to bounce on a way on the fairway further back that will still have a lot of rough and sand to clear that is going to then still have the speed to be not fast enough to get to drop so in this video here now i'm going for a rough bump with the ball guideline to the hole and using the sniper here allows me to play with a very good ball guideline also with a good accuracy which means that hitting a great ball is not going to have any danger uh, with it i'm playing medium distance plus 20 and in the video i would recommend to play minimum distance plus a 20 here because we are closer to the minimum distance line and then it wouldn't be as over adjusted as it is in the video good chance in my opinion on hole number six For hole number seven, we are going to play with our extra mile or any other driver that gives we, gives us a lot of power. So let's say like this, we're going to play with the driver that gives us the most power possible. Now two left spin and a little bit of uh, uh, top spin and the goal here is to be as close to the rough line at the top possible. Maximum distance and plus 10. I'm also using a little bit more than half a ball of left curl. You can see we bounce on the fairway and we now let the ball roll up to the top right corner of the fairway. And this is perfect because now we do have a short um, 
short line towards the pin. For the second shot, we're playing with our Thorn. And the reason I want to play with a Thorn is because even in a low level, we do have enough backspin to allow us to play over the bunker. Because playing with a Hornet or with uh, other short irons, we do have a risk of having too little backspin uh, for playing over the bunker. And that would be stupid because that, then we would lose out on an opportunity here. 10% elevation with true club distance, meaning check where maximum distance are and where minimum distance are, and then make your call. A dead center for a lovely eagle on hole number seven, which I do believe is going to be a very good chance, regardless what wind you have off tee. Hole number 8 is probably the toughest of the par 3s to get a hole in 1 on. The reason for that is the massive elevation drop that we're having here. And also having then to play with a long iron such as a backbone that do not really have a good ball guideline to follow. Which is going to have to be a big guesswork for us all in, in trying to look at, alright, how will the ball roll out? It's very difficult to know with the ball guideline we have on the lower levels. So if you do have a Grizzly level 7 or better, which has 4.5 ball guideline, I strongly advise you to play with that one because the ball guideline will be an essential part of getting a hole in one in a consistent way on hole 8. Maximum distance with a 35% elevation, which is the correct numbers here, is just that we need to uh, aim correctly, which is the reason why we miss on the left hand side. Quasar ball or a navigator is the thing that is enough on hole 8. Hole number 9, and we're going to play with our quarterback. The reason we want to do that is because power is not that necessary. But what's necessary is curl and also a good accuracy. Because if we do not have a good accuracy, a great ball might be danger here as we're playing down the right-hand side. Adjustment is no elevation and it's maximum distance. I'm using all the right spin that I can. I'm also using three bars of top spin. More or less, what can we call that one? We can call that 0 0.7 ball of a curl outside the adjustment range to the right. And we're bouncing on the fairway. And you can still see that we could need maybe a little bit more curl. There is room, obviously. But I would say a little bit more curl would actually be good. Now we do have a position that is going to require a club with some decent power. I would say if you do have the sniper level 9 or better always play with a sniper but if you do not have that then i would strongly recommend to play with the horizon instead to give ourselves uh, a decent ball guideline but also the power uh, to be able to reach to the spot that we are intended to do without having to use overpower which obviously is going to be a tricky thing maximum distance plus 10 and then i'm centering the ball and doing my best to hit perfect Obviously, an albatross is never going to be easy to get, but I definitely believe that there is a possibility to drop here. What has to, have, uh, what has to be said, though, is that hole 9 has always been a difficult hole in terms of getting the speed enough to roll uh, the ball towards the pin without coming in too hot. And that will be the battle for you and your opponents once you play it in the tournament. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for Rookie Division with various wins. If you do want to improve your game even more, scan the QR code here on the screen or go directly to patreon.com slash goldclashtommy via the link in the description down below. Last but not least, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. Those three things will help the channel immensely. Thank you once again for watching. I wish you the best of luck in the Gold Clash game.